Rudy Leatherman from Bacharach. We're here today to talk about the Flyrite Insight, the newest instrument from Bacharach. Um, I've had a chance to use this instrument the past couple of weeks. It's great. A couple of things you need to know about it. One is there's no more downtime for instrument calibration. All you need to do is order up calibrated sensors. When you open up the battery compartment, sensors are right there. You just plug them in. Um, it does all commonly available fuels, natural gas, number two oil, number four oil, number six oil, coal, uh, propane, whatever you need to test. Um, the screen on it is a very large screen that you can also zoom into those numbers. Um, it also has a very nice backlight on it for those dark basements that you still want to be able to easily see the test results. It's easy to navigate through the menu um, and the nice thing I really think will be a lot of fun is you can actually load your company's logo up in through this USB port so when you print out the test results it will actually print out your company's logo. That's designed strictly to help you grow your business. First thing let's do is take a look at setting up the instrument. If you turn it around back, you'll notice that there's a battery cover. Simply lift up on the clip at the bottom, okay, and then we'll install the batteries, observing the polarity. Uh, the positive is on the right-hand side. The battery's in. While we're doing that, you can take a look at the uh, sensors. This is one of the nice features with this instrument, is we have the sensors easily uh, accessed. Uh, this is the oxygen sensor, this is the carbon monoxide sensor. Typically, the oxygen sensors will last about two years. Uh, and this is simply because as soon as that sensor comes out of a, of a container, um, it starts working 24 hours a day. The CO sensors, on the other hand, typically last about five or six years. They just need to be calibrated uh, every six months to a year is typically what we recommend. Uh, the newest um, feature with this, uh, what we call a B-Smart sensor, is that it's very easy to calibrate. There's no downtime. There's no shipping it back to back rack to have the calibration done. All you do is order up a calibrated sensor. When you get it, you simply take the uh, cover off. That exposes the sensor. You unplug that uh, carbon monoxide sensor, you plug in the new calibrated sensor, and the instrument's calibrated. Before we power up the instrument, we'll need to put the hose and probe assembly on. So I'm going to grab that, and we're going to connect it to the bottom of the instrument. You'll notice three ports on the bottom. This port on the far right hand side is for the combustion gases to be pulled through. These ports are just either side of a digital manometer. You'll notice the thermocouple ports up here. The one on the left hand side is for the stack temperature. The one on the right is for ambient or if you're doing temperature differentials, uh, whatever. It's a dual channel thermometer as well. So we'll go ahead and connect these ports up. One thing you might want to keep in mind, a little bit of Vaseline or some sort of a petroleum jelly uh, will help it uh, slide on easier. We're going to connect the Flue gas port up first. We'll connect this one up to the manometer. I'm going to go to the middle one just to make sure you have the polarity correct. And finally, we'll plug in the thermocouple. As you can see, we've already powered this instrument up. You simply do that by pressing the power button. You'll hear the pump start operating and it will count down for about 60 seconds. That's to allow the, uh, the sensors to stabilize and get ready to operate this instrument. Now in order to uh, see the backlight, and that's one of the really nice features with this instrument is the backlight. As you can see when I hit the uh, power button again, it's got a very, very, very bright backlight on it. It's for a dark basement or crawl space or wherever you'll be able to see the test results very easily. Uh, now we'll go into how to set up the instrument. You'll notice this F2 button is under the menu. We'll hit F2. First thing that comes up is the fuel button. This instrument will do just about any type of fuel you can, you can imagine. Anything from natural gas, uh, number two, number four, number six oil. It will also do propane, kerosene, wood, and coal. Let's say we're going to set it up to do number two oil, for example. I'd set it, the cursor to number two. And then again, that green button in the middle is the enter button. I'll hit enter. And that, you can see up at the top here, it's now set up for number two oil. We'll go back to the menu by hitting the F2 button. Scroll down to pressure. This is where we would measure draft pressure, gas pressure, whatever, to zero the instrument out. As you notice there, it says zero. We'll hit F2 to zero it. It says disconnect. Really, all you need to do is pull the probe out, make sure that it's um, you know, just uh, out in the open. Um, hit enter, 
and that should zero out the reading. Now we can either do gas pressure, draft pressure, whatever, uh, uh, whatever pressures you want to read, anything up to 27 water column inches. When we get back, we'll hit escape. We'll go to temperature. Okay, this is where you measure delta T. If I've got two thermocouples plugged into the bottom of the instrument, I can measure temperature rise, temperature drop, anything of that nature. Now to access the test results that we've saved in the memory, we'll go to the, bring the cursor to the memory button, we'll hit enter, the memory directory, we'll hit enter, right now it's loading the test results, and I'd scroll down to the time and date that I took that particular test that I'm interested in looking at, hit the middle green enter button, and there are my test results. To get out of that screen, simply hit the escape button, kind of back you through it, and we're back to the menu. Uh, the next menu button is Setup. Hit Enter. This is where you go in to set the type of temperature units, uh, seren uh, seren centigrade or Fahrenheit, uh, the pressure units, uh, pascals, millibars, uh, water column inches, whatever. Um, this is where you also set the clock for the time and, um, and date. Um, this is where you set the uh, oxygen reference for the carbon monoxide reading, which is typically called carbon monoxide air free reading. Uh, scroll down some more. Uh, this is where you determine whether you want the uh, uh, test results from the pressure reading to print out on the printer or not. A lot of times you're taking uh, combustion and, and, and draft readings from different places. You might not want to necessarily have a print out of the same location. We also have a zoom feature on this instrument. I really like this feature. We'll hit enter. We'll hit zoom. Okay, now when I go back to the instrument, you can see here we've got just zoomed into just two readings as opposed to seeing all the readings at once. Okay, we're going to go back into menu, back to the setup. Okay, we just finished zoom. Okay, you can also with this instrument, you can set the uh, uh, printout so that it'll have your company name, your phone number, maybe even a customer name if you want to. There's three lines of text available. This is one of the nicest features that, uh, that I think this instrument has, called the run hold format. We hit enter, edit format. Now I'm able to make this instrument display any order that I prefer. My own personal preference would be oxygen, CO air free, and stack temperature. I can set this instrument up so that in the display, um, it's, it's whatever order I prefer. Okay, we'll hit escape again to back out of there. As I mentioned earlier, one of the most unique features about this instrument is the B-Smart sensor program. Instead of having to send the entire instrument in for calibration, all you need to do is order up a calibrated carbon monoxide sensor. When it comes, you open up the back. You saw earlier where the carbon monoxide sensor was. You simply unplug it, plug the calibrated sensor in, and return the original sensor to Baccarat. It also has a feature where it will remind you when that calibration is necessary. And again, every six months to a year is typically what we recommend. Another unique feature about the FireRight Insight is the optional reporting package that's available. You can either download the test results right to an infrared printer, and again, you can include your, your company's logo on the printer, plus three lines of text. Um, the other possibility is with this USB port, you can actually plug the instrument into a computer, and with the software provided, you can download all the test results. Um, right to the computer. Uh, you can then email that information out to your customer or just use it as a database to track burner performance history over the, over the course of time. Okay, we're now in a mechanical room uh, to talk more, a little more about specifics of the instrument. We've turned the instrument on again by pressing the power button. It'll go through a 60 second countdown. It's important to make sure that during that 60 second countdown the probe is outside any places where it might be pulling flue gases. It won't hurt anything, but it'll just throw the uh, zero off on the sensors. Um, again, keep in mind this instrument is not only a combustion analyzer. On the bottom of it here, there are two ports um, for the digital manometer that's included. And on this particular piece of equipment, we can use that digital manometer to check the gas pressure, set up the gas pressure, uh, we can also use that digital manometer to test for maybe a faulty um, pressure sensor. Uh, we can also use it to do a static duct pressure test to make sure that that blower is providing sufficient air across the heat exchanger and across the air conditioning coil for efficient uh, uh, operation. 
And obviously we can also pull a flue gas sample out of this hole to make sure that this piece of equipment is operating safely, efficiently, and reliably. Okay, on this particular piece of equipment, we drill a hole in the PVC pipe. We're going to insert the probe into that hole. Um, check with the manufacturer of the equipment that you're installing and servicing, uh, whether it's an oil-fired piece of equipment, gas-fired piece of equipment, a condensing unit, an old atmospheric piece of equipment, or an 80%er. Check with the manufacturer of that piece of equipment to determine what readings you should read in the display of this instrument. A few other things to keep in mind, you also want to make sure that the moisture trap is always below the level of the instruments. If you uh, get it up here, you're going to end up maybe potentially sucking some water into it. Uh, the other thing that's a good idea to do is at the end of each job, if you see any moisture that's accumulated inside that moisture trap, just open it up, empty it out. If it's at the end of the day, just leave it open in the case, let the filter dry out, and let it dry out thoroughly. Um, the other thing I would recommend you do is, at the end of each job, unplug the hose and probe assembly and let the instrument sit there and run for another five minutes or so just to dry things out inside. The reason Backrex hired myself and several other technicians is to help you understand how to make money using these analyzers. Uh, here's a real nice little feature on this uh, instrument with the uh, infrared printer. Uh, I've got a set of test results in there. I hit F1, print out the test results. And again, with this new Pyrite Insight, you're going to be able to put your company's logo on that printer, or on the printer paper. Um, and then what I do to a customer is I'll show them, okay, here's your original furnace. Um, you've got a 500 degree stack temperature. Okay, we can potentially install a piece of equipment, condensing unit, for example, on a gas fire piece of equipment, where you're going to have a 100 degree stack temperature. All that extra heat's going to be going in the house instead of the stack. Now what I'd recommend you do is print off two test results, leave that with the homeowner, the original furnace with that 450, 500 degree stack temperature, and then the new install with the 100 degree stack temperature. Staple the two of those together with your business card. Within a week you'll be getting a call from the neighbor. Thanks again for purchasing your Backrack FireRite Insight um, and taking the time to view this video. For 100 years now, Backrack has been committed to helping you grow your business through innovative technology.